Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a three-day itinerary for Grand Teton National Park. It's a 310,000 acre park that features the 40 mile long Grand Teton Range, pretty much visible from anywhere in the park. And it's only 31 miles away from the world famous Yellowstone. So let's go ahead and take a look. So what you see on the screen now are the three different days that are color coded. So we have the maroon down here, the blue, and then the green. Obviously it depends on which way you're coming in and exiting the park on which days you want to do it But I'm gonna go ahead and dive in the way that I did it Which was coming in from Jackson Hole and then leaving up north to go to Yellowstone day one We start with the blue which I'm gonna dive in a little bit later Why because you know if you're coming from Jackson it might seem like the best way to do it is to do the maroon first um, but I actually did that on day two and again, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later So coming in from Jackson the first stop that you're gonna stop is right here Which is the Taggart Lake Trailhead So the Taggart Lake Trail is a three mile out and back or you can combine it with Beaver Creek Trail And that makes it a 3.9 mile loop. It's extremely easy and it's actually one of my favorite hikes in the park um, Just because it provided a lot of shade. We were also able to see a moose on this trail, which was awesome um, and then it ends at Taggart Lake, which is super gorgeous and a great spot to have some lunch or a snack. After we finished that loop, we went up to the Jenny Lake area, which is where we were staying. So that's right about here. Um, this is an area that has so many amenities, which is why I really recommend staying here. It's also location wise, like it's really central in the park. So anywhere that you go in the park, it's a really great destination to kind of just be in the midst of everything. So once we checked into our cabin, the next place that we went was the Jenny Lake boating, which is again, right in the same area. So this boat ride is a little bit pricey. So just up to you if this is something that you want to do. Um, but I do recommend it. It's $18 per person round trip, but it is really nice to, you know, get out on the water, see the Tetons from a different vantage point. And it also leads you exactly to the trailhead for Hidden Falls and Inspiration Point, which you can see crosses over on the other side of the lake. So there's Inspiration Point here and the Hidden Falls right behind it. Total Inspiration Point and Hidden Falls together is 2.2 miles round trip. It's a pretty moderate hike. Um, right where the Jenny Lake boat drops you off, you will see a sign for Hidden Falls and Inspiration Point. So about half a mile from the trailhead is where you'll stumble upon Hidden Falls and it's absolutely gorgeous. And this is actually where most people will end their hike because right from Hidden Falls to get to Inspiration Point, it gets extremely steep. Um, for about a little bit more than half a mile, I think it's like 0.6 miles to reach in inspiration point. So total that's 1.1 miles each way on the hike. So if you're not up for a steep incline, just hang out by Hidden Falls. But if you are up for it, I highly recommend doing it because it almost gives you a bird's eye view of the entire lake beneath you. So it's a really cool and different vantage point than you'd get from anywhere else in the park. Once you're finished with those two hikes, which really don't take that long, you'll hop back on the boat because you bought that round trip ticket and it'll drop you back off at the Jenny Lake boating site. From here, you'll hop in your car and you're gonna make the drive to the Jenny Lake Lake Overlook. So there is a scenic drive that leads you to this spot um, and the scenic drive itself doesn't really offer any views of the lake. It's a lot more foresty. So I take this opportunity to drive really slow and look for a wildlife that likes to stay deep in the trees. But once you actually get to this overlook point, that's when the trees will open up and you'll get to see the whole lake from there. After that, you will move on to Cascade Canyon Turnout. So this is just another spot to hopefully spot some wildlife and see a really great view of the Teton Range. After that, you're going to continue going up north and you're gonna hit the String Lake Trailhead. So the String Lake Loop is a 3.7 miles round trip and it's really easy. It's a nice lakeside loop, offers great views of the forest and the lake area. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, doing another hike. Um, otherwise, this was a great area that I saw a lot of people paddleboarding, kayaking, just kind of relaxing on the lake. So that could be another option. Um, also in this area, there is Lee Lake Trail. Um, which is slightly above that and this one is two miles round trip and it's also pretty easy um, But I know that there's a lot of hiking in this day So I'm kind of just giving you various options if you want to add on another hike um, Just keep in mind again. They're, they're more so walks um, the, the hardest hike of the day today will definitely be up to inspiration point after that you would make your way back down here to Jenny Lake so you can you go back to your accommodations grab dinner and end your first day all right so now we're diving into day two which is the maroon pins and when by the time I'm done explaining this you'll understand why I chose the maroon pins on day two instead of day one we are starting at Jenny Lake since that's where you woke up 
coming down here and the first stop is going to be Dornan's truck wagon so this is a small area to get gas, food, souvenir shopping. I highly recommend eating at the Chuck Wagon restaurant because they have tables outside so you can soak in the Teton range and have an opportunity to see some wildlife while you enjoy a nice meal. From here, you're going to take Antelope Flats Road. Um, this is just a great place to see wildlife, stunning views, but really your main goal of taking this road is to get you to Mormon Row. So, Mormon Row is an area that was formerly known as the town of Grovant, which was settled in the late 1890s by Mormons from the Salt Lake region. Um, but in the mid 1900s, Mormon Row was acquired to expand Grand Teton National Park. And in 1997, the district was added to the National Register of Historic Places. So there are multiple barns in that area that are great photo opportunities. The one that you've probably most famously seen photos of is the T.A. Moulton Barn. Um, lots of people taking great photos there and honestly one of my favorite places to photograph in the park. So park your car in this area, there's tons of things to explore, great, again, great photo opportunities from every angle to see all the different barns, so spend a little bit of time of here walking around. Then you'll go ahead and hop back in your car, make your way up Route 191 to Glacier View Turnout, which one of the many great turnouts where you can get good photos of the Teton Range. Then you continue your way up to Schwabacher Landing. I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, this place I actually really liked because it was extremely peaceful and it wasn't um, too many people there. And I think part of the issue for that or the reason for that is that it was a gravel like dirt road to get there. Um, so you gotta make sure that your car can actually withstand that. Um, but once you get down there, you're right next to the river. You have the Tetons right behind you. It's super peaceful, have some snacks and just kind of relax. It's also a really great spot to get a reflection photo shot where you have the Tetons, you know, in the forefront and then the reflection on the water right in front of you. So it's a really cool photo spot. Then we continue making our way up Route 191 and you get to Teton Point Turnout, another place to see the Tetons and get some great photos. And the last spot of the day would be the Snake River Overlook. So um, all of these spots, you know, they're all looking at the Tetons, but they're all do it in kind of a different way, whether you're really close up, you're next to a river, you're kind of a bird's eye view. So just gives you a bunch of different vantage points for you yourself to look at them and also some cool photos. After this, you're gonna make your way all the way down to Moose Wilson Road. Um, and so this is where I'm gonna explain why I did this on day two. So I had actually booked a scenic dinner float which you can book through the park. It's $105, so a little bit pricey for sure, but it includes a steak dinner right on the river and then a 10 mile scenic like river float um, where you see lots of different wildlife that you can't really see unless you're on the river. So we saw tons of bald eagles and beavers and different things. So I highly recommend it if you're willing to fork out $105. Um, but it was a dinner cruise, so it, I had to end my day there, which is why I wanted to do that on day two. Um, even if you decide to not do the river flow, I highly recommend still doing it this way because Moose Wilson Road is a great spot to view moose, obviously, hence the name. And moose are a lot more active at dusk and at dawn. So you could still, you know, end your day here, park your car, um, and just wait for moose. And just a little PSA, just like, you know, anything in Yellowstone, anywhere that you're trying to spot wildlife, don't expect to just pull up, see wildlife, and leave. A lot of these viewpoints and turnouts, like, you need to park your car and stay there for a while. Just sit silently, wait, see if you see anything, because um, that's the best way that you're actually gonna spot something. Um, also, a pro tip for both Yellowstone and here, anytime you see people pull over, you pull over too, because what that means, 99% of the time is that there's an animal spotting. Um, every time we saw someone pull over, we pulled over too. We saw moose because people were pulled over. We saw bears multiple times because people were pulled over. Um, bison, so like pretty much any animal, as soon as you see someone pulled over, pull over as well. So Moose Wilson Road is a great opportunity to hopefully see some moose, especially at the end of the day. After that, you'll make your way back up to Jenny Lake for your accommodations, and that is the end of day two. Now we're headed into our last day in Grand Tetons, which is the green pins in the northernmost part of the park because you head to Yellowstone after that. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to head out here onto Route 191 and you'll go to Elk Ranch Flats Turnout. So this is a great place to view bison, elk, and pronghorn. Um, we honestly saw so many of all three of those animals while we were there. Um, and it's actually some of my favorite photos I 
took of the entire park were there. So I think it's a really great spot to just pull over, use your binoculars, see all the animals, and a lot of the bison are actually quite close in this area, at least when I was there. So I feel like it's a really um, great spot to guarantee some wildlife sightings. Next, you'll make your way back to Signal Mountain Summit Road. So you don't have to do a hike for this, it's just you driving up a windy road, so be careful. But it is a really nice viewpoint of the Snake River, the plains, and the Teton Mountain Range. So it kind of gives you like a bird's eye view. So again, I feel like it's a really unique view and I, I really would recommend it. Then we continue on to Jackson Lake Dam. This is just a quick photo op. There's no like wildlife spottings. It's kind of right in the middle of like the main roads, but it's a cool spot to just see like the entire range with just like the water in front of you. Next, we go back to Oxbow Bend Turn. So this is a great place to see wildlife, predominantly bears, birds, otters, and moose. Um, I personally love this spot because you were, you could just see the river like kind of turning leading to the Grand Tetons. It was so stunning. We didn't see any bears here, but I joined a Facebook group that would notify me every single time like bears were spotted in the park. And literally the day we left, I think pretty much every day for a few weeks after that, there was a bear that kept coming right exactly here in Oxbow Bend, turn out to the like water. Um, and so it seems like a really great spot to get high chances of seeing a bear. Next, we move on to Willow Flats Overlook. And this is another great wildlife spot, predominantly for bears and elk. Um, and my personal favorite photo I've taken of the entire Grand Tetons was at this spot. So I think it's a really great photo spot. Next, we move on to Two Ocean Lake Trailhead. So this is a long dirt road that leads to this area. So make sure that your car can handle it. And this road is also the area where the famous Grizzly 399 and her cubs were frequently spotted um for the past few years so you know obviously it's a great place to go to actually try to spot them but also be careful make sure you have your bear spray and you're doing everything that you know one would need to do if you're hiking on trails when there are bears around so just be extra cautious for that and um, there is a lakeshore loop trail that you can do or you can simply enjoy the lake area we were doing our trail and we saw a lot of people just you know on the shores of the lake and just kind of enjoying that because it's super peaceful since it's off the main road next you make your way to coulter bay village so if you don't stay in jenny lake this is is the other popular place to stay. The only reason why I recommend Jenny Lake over Coulter Bay is you can see it's so much further north. So you're kind of isolated, but it's still a great place because it has lots of amenities. So spend your time here, you know, grab lunch. There's also a Coulter Bay Lakeshore Loop. So it's a two mile easy loop um, that's either paved or like dock. Um, so very easy, but just a nice way to, you know, see the entire lake there. And then the last thing you will do in Grand Tetons as you're leaving the park is you'll go to Jackson Lake Overview. Again, just another nice spot to pull over, see the Tetons one last time with the lake. There you have it. Those are your three days in Grand Teton National Park. I'm just gonna end this video with some quick tips that I think you should know before you go to the park. Um, so first off, there's minimal cell service and Wi-Fi. I have T-Mobile and my mom has AT&T when we went and neither one of us had service the entire time we were there, but I did hear people talking about Verizon being the best service offered in the park. So that's something to consider. Um, in regards to Wi-Fi, I only found three Wi-Fi spots um, in Coulter Bay, which was the laundromat, the Lynch restaurant, and Coulter Bay Cafe an office. I said it in my Yellowstone video and I'll say it in this video too. Make sure that you, you know, allocate enough time for the day because it takes a lot longer to drive places than you think because of the one-way roads and the frequent animal crossings. So just kind of factor that into your day. Don't try to jam pack too much in a small amount of time. Everything that I just gave you, use that as like your full day guide and you'll have plenty of time to do everything. Last thing I'm gonna recommend is downloading the NPS Grand Teton National Park app before you get to the park. Like I mentioned before, the service and Wi-Fi can be pretty bad or just non-existent. So make sure to download it before you go. It tells you exactly what to see in each, each area, gives you information about each thing, and even allows you to follow directions on, on a map, and it's all offline. So the trouble is most people don't know about the app until they go and they don't have enough service to actually download it. So I really recommend downloading it before you go, and you can even drop pins like I have here, or you can save my Google map, which I'll put in the description below. You can save that download it and you can use the Google map offline as well. If you guys have any questions about this beautiful Grand Tetons National Park, one of my favorites, please drop them in the comments below and I'll make sure to help you out. I want to make sure that your trip is as amazing as mine was. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.